the efficacy, the decreases of the it decreased acne by 70%. 70%. This is super fascinating. Today, let's talk about infrared, whether it's saunas, whether it's just a light, whether it's coming from a laser, it doesn't matter, an LED. Let's talk about infrared and skin, and next time we'll talk about it in terms of flexibility and joints and things like that, joint health. I've got a paper here way back from 2013 in the journal called Seminars in Cutaneous Medicine and Surgery. Sounds stimulating. <laughs> it's called low level laser light therapy that's the term you got to look for if you're looking for infrared research like i said last time in skin infrared low level laser light therapy in skin stimulating healing and restoring again from harvard this research paper and it starts off by saying low level laser light therapy is fast growing technology used to treat a number of conditions that require stimul stimulation of healing relief of pain and inflammation, restoration. The skin responds well to near-infrared wavelengths. Near-infrared, that's just after the visible spectrum. Photons are absorbed by mitochondria. I'll talk about how that happens in a few episodes. Electron transport, adenosine ATP, in other words, increases energy. And nitric oxide, we talked about that last time. Blood flow. Uh, reactive oxygen species, diverse signaling pathways activating. So it really, I'll just give you a little preview of a few episodes from now when I'm going to tell you how this works. But essentially it imitates exercise. This infrared imitates exercise. And you can use it every day. Pro athletes are using this. I'm using this. I have one of these things. In fact, I'm growing stem cells in the lab right now. They're called adipose-derived mesenchymal stem cells, AMSCs. They, we get them at Mayo Clinic from fat cells, liposuction. And, you know, I'm, try, I'm, I'm kind of manipulating them to try and improve these stem cells in order to re-inject them into the same people, the same patients, especially for joints because that's I work in orthopedic surgery. But, you know, in general, it's really interesting. Guess what the next sign is? Stem cells can be activated following an in, in, or allowing increased tissue repair and healing from near infrared, aka low level laser light therapy. Stem cells can be activated, has beneficial effects on wrinkles, acne, scars, healing of burns. That's huge. That's hugely significant. If you've got acne, why use a drug when you can use laser? And I think it's become relegated to kind of this, this quasi scientific you know, thing in people's mind because it's on infomercials and things like that. And because, you know, some of these lasers are really poor quality. You've got to get a good quality infrared uh, LED or something like that if you're going to use it. I mean, you don't need to buy a laser, but you certainly can get an infrared that's poor quality and then an infrared that's a really high quality. So you've got to be careful with those infomercials, but the science is here on the actual infrared. It reduces UV damage vitiligo it increases pigmentation and reduces depigmentation um, inhibits the autoimmunity psoriasis it can benefit this is a review paper this is published from harvard researchers um, almost it says almost a complete absence of side effects i mean this is amazing and this is 2013 right so you'd think we'd have a huge amount of research today that's kind of grown and expanded, but you still haven't really heard a lot about infrared in the medical, you know, in the medical office. You don't go to the doctor and have him say, you know, the dermatologist, and he says, let's do some infrared. You just don't, unfortunately. Listen to this. Exposure of sunlight was reported to be highly effective for the treatment of acne, for acne. And that's one of the reasons infrared works, I think, is the sun has a lot of infrared, so you can imitate that using an infrared LED and just holding it by your skin or sitting in an infrared sauna. The efficacy, the decreases of the, it decreased acne by 70%, 70%. That's probably way better than drugs. Isn't this amazing? Burns, 
you know, vitiligo, these conditions, these it's just skin health. They talk about collagen, how collagen gets broken up as we age. It doesn't, you know, stretch very well. This resolves that. Again, it sounds like an infomercial. If you think I'm joking, I'm not. Low level laser light therapy in the infrared wavelengths appears to have a wide range of applications of use in dermatology. <clears throat> this is the conclusion. There is a credibility gap that needs to be overcome before it's routinely applied in every dermatologist's office. In other words, people just don't take it seriously. And part of that is the drug companies don't want you to take it seriously. They want you to take the drugs. Let's look at this paper, 2017. This is the last paper here for today. Again, we're just focusing on skin, superficial things. Then we'll take it in and look at joints. And then in the next episode after that, we're going to look at the brain, which is awesome. Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology here. <clears throat> Again, this was just this year. This review paper is called The Effectiveness of Treatments different types of treatments for androgenic alopecia, a systematic review and meta-analysis. What's androgenic alopecia? They say, or male pattern hair loss, boom, boom, uh, mediated by DHT, is mediated by DHT. Now we know the hormone, we know how kind of the pathways that are involved in hair loss. Tricky thing with hair loss is a lot of these drugs that you're trying to develop, they cause cancer. You know, you, you try and get those hair cells to grow. Instead, you end up with some kind of cancer. But they've got a drug called minoxidil, and they've got a drug called finasteride. That's a really popular one for regrowing hair. How does this relate to infrared, infrared saunas, infrared light, infrared LEDs? Well, <clears throat> they looked at five groups of studies comparing low-level la laser light therapy infrared wavelengths and people on 5% minidoxyl, 2% minidoxyl, or finasteride, that drug, one milligram of that. All treatments, they say, were, were superior to placebo. They were all beneficial. They all regrew hair. Um, but that's all they say in the, in the abstract, so let's dig into the paper because we want to know, well, how much, you know, what do they do, all right? So they have this chart here with all the data, and, of course, Low level laser light therapy, infrared held on the head, better than minidoxyl, better than 5% minidoxyl, better than 2% minidoxyl, the drug, it's better. You'll never hear that on a TV advertisement. And again, remember, no side effects, really. Um, here, here's the numbers. The mean difference in hair count, they're actually counting hair per centimeter squared um, from highest to lowest. Finasteride was the most uh, beneficial in terms of hair growth, 18 additional hairs per, per centimeter squared, low level laser light therapy, 17.66 hair, additional hairs per centimeter square centimeter, hairs per square centimeter, um, and then 2% minidoxyl twice daily was 8%, 8 hairs, so 8 versus basically 18. It's amazing. So really, it's stacked up really close to finasteride. I mean, it's basically the same, plus or minus one hair per square centimeter. And again, without the side effects, without any other risks, without messing with your DHT levels and your hormones, and whew, it's unbelievably beneficial for your skin, scarring, all these things, these papers, these scientific professional researchers are publishing, your stem cells like I'm researching with laser you know with led infrared so you know utilize this technology don't relegate this to the infrared the, the infomercials in your mind relegate this as really beneficial as mimicking sunlight as natural and side effect free